This is Andy Perua for Boxing Social in association with Betfred, and I'm delighted to be joined by Jack Cattrall on Zoom. Jack, or Algato, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. I'm getting used to this Zoom now. I've done a few, done a few over the Zoom, but I'm all good, thank you. Just uh, doing what I can. How are you? I'm okay, mate. Obviously, we've had a, a little discussion off camera. Um, I'm at that point where I think many people are now kind of eager to get going again, get back outside. How are you finding life in lockdown? Yeah, I think I was all right for the first couple of weeks, uh, like everybody else, really. But really itching to get back in the gym properly now, uh, back training with the lads and Chantel, and just itching to get back in the ring and get a fight there. I mean, even before lockdown, anyway, and this is like added on now. So yeah, just really excited to get back in, get fit, and uh, get the ball rolling. You obviously you haven't fought since uh, November of last year when you was out in Dubai. This is this could well go on to possibly be in 10, 11 months until some form of behind closed door show comes into place, which you might feel like participating in. What what does that make you think? You know, when when you think about the fact you could end up waiting close to a year until you you from the last point in the ring until your next point. Yeah, for me it's about I do everything I can. Uh, I'll stay fit. I'll stay strong. I'll stay ready. Stay disciplined. Uh, I mean, every other factor by them is out of my hands, so uh, I'm not going to let an opportunity slide by. I've worked too hard to get to this position that I'm in, uh, to not take an opportunity with both hands. So uh, if it's behind closed doors, uh, no matter the circumstances, I'll be ready. We'll obviously touch more onto behind closed doors shows in a second, but with your training at the minute, what are you doing? You, you mentioned to me off camera that Jamie's, uh, Jamie Moore, your trainer, obviously sent, sent you across a little programme to stick to. Just talk to me about that. What are you doing? Yeah, uh, so obviously I'm training with Jamie and I've got my strength coach, Johnny Velocity, and my nutritionist, Sam McKenzie. And between them, really, I've just been uh, taking advice and plans from them all, really. Uh, Jamie sent me boxing videos to study and stuff that I can practice, whether it be in the garage on the bag or shadow boxing in the garden. Uh, quite fortunate where I live. It's, it's quite rural, really. So I've been out running, cycling, circuit training in the garden, just trying to do what I can to, to stay sane, really. How different or difficult have you found it not having that normal gym environment of going, being able to go to the gym and seeing, you know, the eight, nine, ten other people who would be in there at the same time as you kind of bouncing off each other? Yeah, I mean, at first I thought it was all right. I was, I was banging to the training, enjoying it. And then I kind of hit a wall really. And I was like, wow. Because, I mean, some days it's hard when you're on your own to, to get up in the morning, go and do the miles and then set up a circuit in the garden. But, uh, I mean, I got past that stage now. Uh, and I'm focused. I just need uh, need to be back in the gym, like I said, with, with everybody else in the gym. I think it's miles better when you're training with other people. Uh, you can all push each other and uh, keep learning together. I've, uh, I uh, did an interview earlier with another one of your camp mates and soon to be camp mates, uh, one of which said to say hello, Big Bones. <laughs> big Bones. <laughs> Big Stevie Ward. Yeah, he did. Um, he's, he's in the same boat as you, mate. He's obviously like, eager to get back into the gym. But as I mentioned, I've done another interview with somebody who's going to be joining up with you guys, Dave Allen. What are your thoughts on Dave's link up with yourself and with, uh, with the rest of the team? Yeah, brilliant. I'm happy for Dave and I'm happy for Jamie. I think it's a brilliant link up, uh, I think. And I just managed to catch a little glimpse then of your 40-second clip of what he was saying. And I think it will... It would be good for David to be able to, he said he wants to impress Jamie and uh, that's what's going to make him work harder and keep improving and vice versa. Jamie's excited to be working with Dave and hopefully that relationship can blossom and we'll see the best of Dave Allen. What, what is your stable like? Your stable's got such a, a broad range of, of characters in there. People who are, have gone on to achieve world titles, fought for world titles. You've got yourself on the verge of a world title for Akib Fiaz at the other end of the spectrum, just starting out. Dave Allen, very well known heavyweight across British boxing. You know, what, what is your camp like if you could just explain it and everybody who's in and amongst it? Yeah, for me, when I joined, I mean, there's been a couple of people joined since, but. I think, it, like I said, it's a great spectrum. It's got every, uh, world champions, former world champions, uh, Akib, who's started his professional career. Uh, I know Tommy's just retired. 
and you've got a great great range of fighters uh, from the very start and people who probably t- towards the back end of the career Martin Murray's fought what for four world titles is it uh, been all the big shows is it four four and then I think he fought for an interim as well so whether you class that or not yeah, four so you've got You've got fighters that have been there, done it and seen it. So uh, one of the decisions for me before I joined was joining a stable where they had the experience, somewhere I could walk into. And Jamie being a former fighter himself, he's been in them situations. Uh, and not only in the boxing ring, outside of the boxing, uh, somebody that had experience around the business and things that you can uh, learn and grow from as well. What's it like from a training perspective when you are all together with regards to one-on-one time? I know Jamie's obviously got Jamie and Nigel both busy men with all of you. What's it like with regards to the one-on-one coaching? Yeah, uh, obviously I'm in the gym pretty much all year round. I'm quite fortunate. It's only a 20 minute drive for me, but uh, you've got fighters traveling over like Stevie and Frampton who will come over for uh, quite some time still. They'll come over for eight, 10, 12 weeks for their fights and, Chantel, she travels and Tommy Coyle used to travel. So I'm quite lucky in the sense I get to see them all come and I'm in the gym all the time. And then when, you're at, when I have got a fight date, you'll get your specific program and stuff you need to be working on and working with. Uh, yeah, Jamie and I work brilliantly uh, between them both, real to stagger the gym times and everyone gets that work that they need. Obviously, with yourself, and before lockdown came about and, and the current situation we're in, what was your plan for this year? Uh, the plan remains the same, really. I had the fight in November, uh, mandatory for the world title still. Uh, I was halfway out to China to watch Ramirez and Postel uh, the week before. Obviously, that got postponed because of the pandemic. It was rescheduled for California, I believe. Obviously, it's been rescheduled again, so... I'm kind of just waiting for that fight to happen. I've got to remain fit and ready. Uh, whether I do fight before then, who knows? If not, I'll be waiting for the winner of Ramirez Postal. On Ramirez Postal, what are your thoughts on it? If that does go ahead once boxing returns, how do you see it kind of playing out? Yeah, I think it's a great fight. Uh, obviously, uh, Postal's been beat. There's a blueprint on how to beat him. Uh, Ramirez, he's gone from strength to strength. He looked good in the hooker fight. Initially, I thought we were going to get the hooker fight before unification. Then he got beat and the WBC then called the mandatory before the WBO. But uh, I think it's a lot tougher fight, though, than a lot of people have said to me. A lot of people are expecting quite an easy win by Ramirez. Uh, and that might be the case, but I'd certainly not look overlook Victor Postel. I think it'd be a good fight. There are a number of fighters in the super lightweight division who are there or thereabouts challenging for world titles or former world champions, locks of Maurice Hooker, Regis Progre, amongst others. With you yourself now, if you wasn't to face um, Jose Ramirez or Victor Postel, you, you've said you need to have kind of one fight in between just to get, get yourself back in there. What level of opposition do you kind of go in with? Do you test yourself against one of those fighters at world level? Do you go just below so you don't take any risks? How do you find that balancing act? Yeah, it's a, it's a difficult one. Ideally, I'd like to go straight into these big fights. I mean, domestically, I've probably had 10, 12 domestic fights over the years. And I think, I believe I beat everybody quite comfortably. Uh, I've not been tested at that level yet. So it's time to, to push on and fight the likes of uh, Progre, Hooker, Taylor, Ramirez, Postel. These are the fights that I want. In an ideal world, I'd get a fight before them, a fringe world level fight, get my foot back in, in the door. But I mean, that doesn't happen. I'm not overly bothered. I'd, I'd go into one of them fights tomorrow. Do you feel like you will be in the ring once more, regardless at this point in time of that the Postal Ramirez fight, simply because of your time away from the ring since your last bout back in November? Uh, it's, it's hard for me to say. I mean, it depends how long I guess the Ramirez Postal fights. I see that they're both training. Uh, the fight will be on top rank, whether they can find a location, that fight can happen soon in a different country. That would be ideal for me, <clears throat> meaning my fight gets pushed forward. But I mean, that doesn't happen anytime soon, then I probably will have to fight again, uh, get some rounds under the belt and 
just go from there. It's hard to speak so far in advance with everything going on. I've got a great team and uh, good advisors, so I'll just be patient and I know when it's my time, I'll be ready. Obviously, at this moment in time, you know, the British Boxing Board of Control have released guidelines for you know, boxing to return behind closed doors. Is that something you'd be interested in, first and foremost? If you had to go behind closed doors for a fight, would you be interested in it? Yeah, uh, I wouldn't say I'd be interested in it, but if that's what's on the table, then that's what I'm doing. Uh, I mean, in an ideal world, you'd like the fight to be the big venue, thousands of people there, friends, family, fans. But, I mean, if you've got to fight behind closed doors uh, to get where you need to be, then, then that'll be. There's a lot of talk at the minute about the, the heavyweight division and the potential undisputed fight between Anthony Joshua and Tyson Fury. Obviously, we don't know when or if we, we will ever see that, but if we did, what are your thoughts on it? I love that fight, and I hope that fight can get made. Uh, two great champions, uh, mega fight, two British fighters. It's, it's massive, and uh, I love them both. I love Anthony Joshua, what he stands for. I love Tyson Fury, what he stands for. So I'd be... I'd be sat there really enjoying it, but I think I'd have to, if I was a betting man, I'd have to lean to Tyson Fury. I see there's a few guys in your camp who are kind of waiting for their coming fights to either be announced or to, to have something in the pipeline. Carl Frampton being one of those, he was on the verge of having the deal announced with uh, Jamal Herring to fight for that WBO Super Featherweight title. You see him in the gym every day. How do you think Carl would fare against Jamal if that fight happens? Post lockdown. Yeah, from what I've seen over the last couple of years with Carl, he's he's looked great in his fights. Uh, he's mature now. He knows what he needs to do. Uh, I've, to be honest, I've not watched loads of Jamal Herring, but obviously it goes without saying. You back your own, and I would uh, I'd be there training alongside Carl and hoping he can do the business. Right. What an achievement that three weight world champion. But when you are in the gym, I know you may not ever think about it now because it'll be like the norm to you but do you ever reflect and do you ever look and think you know I am in the gym with the likes of Carl Frampton who's a former two-weight world champion Martin Murray has fought for numerous world titles Rocky Fielding former world champion you know do you ever look and think blimey I'm, I'm surrounded by all these guys do you ever take stock of that and what, what goes through your mind? Of course I, I like to sit down and think quite a lot and I've been quite fortunate and blessed over the years that I have been professional, that I've been able to, to be in the gym with, with world champions, spa world champions and be in training camps. Uh, I guess it probably won't hit me like it will maybe in 10, 15 years' time when I look back, but I'm definitely grateful of the opportunities that, opportunities that I've had uh, being along such great fighters and uh, gaining knowledge all the time. Jack, as I say, it is getting late now, so I don't want to keep you for too long. So we will leave that there, and I'll leave you to enjoy the rest of your evening or what's left of it. Before I let you go, what would you like to say to everyone who tunes in to watch our interview? Yeah, I just hope everyone's keeping well, staying safe, uh, listening to the government, and hopefully we'll be back soon with some more exciting fights and uh, we can all get back to business. Jack, it's well put there and I'll leave it as it is, as I say. Thank you for speaking to Boxing Social and I'll hopefully see you soon. Take care, Randy. Thank you very much.